to question number six. A 16-year-old uh, man with AML in first remission following two courses of induction therapy and a first cycle of consolidation with cytorabin. He has required multiple red cell and platelet transfusion. CBC one week ago showed WBC count of 4,900, hemoglobin 10.4, platelet of 2,10,000. Today, he presents with uh, pancytopenia just before the uh, second cycle of consolidation chemotherapy. At this point of time, his WBC is only 1,700, hemoglobin is 8.5 and platelet count is only 32,000. And AST is elevated, ALT is also elevated. Patient denies drinking of any alcohol and takes no medications. He complains of diarrhea also and as a diffuse, minimally pruritic erythematous rash. Liver is palpable three fingers below the costal margin. Spleen is not palpable. Bone marrow biopsy shows 10% cellularity, which means the marrow cellularity has reduced for the age. And uh, less than 1% blasts are there with normal immunophenotype. So this is not due to relapse of leukemia. Anything less than 5% blasts is acceptable. Peripheral blood CMV PCR is negative and we can make sure that uh, this pancytopenia and uh, damage to the organs is not due to CMV infection or disseminated CMV infection. What would be the next most logical approach? So here you have ruled out CMV related pancytopenia and uh, your uh, organ damage because of dissemination of CMV because this is a patient who is immunosuppressed and you have made sure that it is not due to relapse or refractory leukemia also because the bone marrow blast is still less than one percent less than five percentage which is a good response but what is the reason for that so we have already talked about that so this is a typical patient with transfusion associated graft versus host disease so he received multiple red cell and platelet transfusions but they have not mentioned anything about irradiated blood products so that is the reason that this patient has got transfusion associated graft versus host disease. That's going to be the primary diagnosis here. So you can clearly see that this patient is having a bone marrow suppression, this patient is having a skin involvement, this patient is having liver involvement, and this patient is having intestinal involvement as well in the form of diarrhea. So this is a typical picture of a patient who's having a graft versus host disease, especially acute GVHD. And in a patient with transfusion associated acute GVHD, bone marrow suppression will be the primary problem. And what is going to be the uh, next logical approach? It's going to be skin biopsy. So skin biopsy will tell you that the patient is suffering from transfusion associated graft versus host disease. So what about other options? Empirical antifungals is not indicated here because you're not suspecting fungal infection or invasive aspergillosis. Next cycle of RSC. Uh, okay, so that's fine. So you're going to continue the consolidation therapy, but you need to address the primary issue that is transfusion associated graft as host disease. It's very difficult to treat, has a 90 to 100% mortality. And defibrotide is something that is used uh, in a disease called as sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, or otherwise called as hepatic vena occlusive disease. It happens after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So any patient after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, if they're coming with significant liver dysfunction or liver failure, so one differential diagnosis, sinusoidal obstruction syndrome or hepatic vena occlusive disease. For, to prevent that and to treat that, you can use something called as defibrotide. Many centers, many BMT centers currently use defibrotide prophylactically to prevent the development of hepatic vena occlusive disease. The right answer for this question is skin biopsy. 